Craig Basher here. I've seen some tutorials online, and and they're not bad tutorials. Um, some people do tutorials and do YouTube, and they're kind of green. They're they're kind of new to Inventor, and I just want people to know that Inventor is not a hard software to learn. It's very easy, and but making sure that you use the right tools and the right practices are important. So here here is my version of creating a Turner's cube, and and I can do this very very quickly so let's hop over to the software all right so we're in inventor here let's talk about constraints so when I start drawing a line or an arc or a circle rectangle constraints are applied automatically you notice that my cursor there's a little glip right underneath the yellow that shows me that this line is horizontal and cannot be rotated unless I break the constraint or remove the constraint now those two lines are now perpendicular. You'll notice that there's a glip on each line. And as I go across, you'll see that, that I have another constraint. It's a parallel constraint. Now if I right click and say close, this is just like AutoCAD technology. Now if I hit F8 on my keyboard, if I hit right click and I say show all constraints, it shows me the constraints that are being applied to this geometry. Now what I would want to do is I want to make sure that this geometry is symmetrical and so one way to do this is to line it up to the origin plane so now this plane this geometry is symmetrical in the X okay I'll do the same thing in the Y by using a vertical constraint and apply it to the origin plane and the middle of that point or the midpoint of that line now I have uh, symmetrical both X and Y now this, since this is a cube, I probably wanted to make it also equal, equal size. This side is equal to that side. So now that I'm symmetrical both x, y, you'll notice that when I drag, it shows that it's symmetrical. Now another type of constraint here is called dimensional constraints. And so when I apply that constraint, it makes everything symmetrical. The side is symmetrical to this side because it was equal, remember? So if I right click and I say show all constraints again, you'll notice the other constraints that get added. Can, constraints can be deleted and be removed. And different constraints can be applied, but the workflow should be create constraints then dimension. As you get more uh, familiar with Inventor, you'll probably be able to do these at the same time. Now that this is really finished, I can go ahead and make the extrusion piece. To do that, I'm just gonna go into the modeling tools and say I want to extrude this length here. You'll notice that it automatically changed the length. This is a variable that's being used. This D0 is this dimension here. Well, I want to make it symmetrical. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to use the Y axis when we start making our cutouts. So here is my cube. It's fully symmetrical. How do I know? Well, I can come up here and go to my parametrics here, my parameters here and make some changes to that. So to do a change, let's say I'll go from one and uh, seven eighths to two inches or three inches, let's just do that. You'll notice that the cube grows equally because if I have one dimension controlling the whole cube. Okay, let's go back and change it back to the one and, and seven eighths here. Now I'm gonna make a second sketch. I'm gonna put it right here on that plane. And it's going to automatically project the origin point. This is like the center of the universe for Inventor. And I'm going to create all my circles on that origin point. So as long as I've connected to that, it locks those circles as in the X and Y. And all I have to do now is add a dimensional constraint. And that's why you see blue geometry going from green to blue, is that means that you've locked down the X and Y, but you've also defined the size of it. So 0.5 there. Now I have completely done with that side of it. So now what we want to do is start cutting out for the Turner cube. So we'll go into our extrusion tool again. Okay. All right. So if I start go dragging the other direction, it automatically starts cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and say 0.25 here for the first extrusion. Instead of creating another sketch, all sketches are consumed when they're used in the extrusion tool. So what I can do is I can share this sketch that I used before to create my other extrusions. So when I go to extrude again, it allows me to pick 
the sketches that I haven't or I want to use again. So once again, I'm going to do a cut, all right? And I want it to be a half an inch this time. But instead of putting in 1.5, I'm going to relate it back to the original sketch. So here I can say show my dimension of the first cutout and use this variable and multiply that times 2 so that way my cutout is twice as deep. It's kind of hard to see with the sketch on top, but when we're finished, you'll see how easy this is. One more extrusion, but this time we're just going to do our center circle. But we're going to tell it to extrude through the whole block here and create a cut. So there's our cut. If we took this and moved this into more of a wireframe look, or we could do wireframe with hidden edges, we can kind of see what it's going to look like. I'm finished with that sketch. I'm going to re turn off the visibility. We don't really need it anymore. Now remember, I made this part symmetrical around the X. So if we take a look at our origin axes, you can see you got X, Y, and Z. They go right through the middle of that cube. So instead of recreating every sketch that I had created before, I'm just going to use a tool here called Pattern. And I can pattern those features or those cutouts that I created and go around the origin axes. This makes it a lot easier. And then you can edit one shape, one sketch, to edit all the sides of the cube. Let's repeat that one more time. We'll say Pattern. We'll go and click on the same extrusions again. But this time our axis would be this axis. And we're going to repeat that four again. And we're going to click OK to that. So let's go take our view here and move over to the shaded view. There we go. We have our Turner's Cube. So I really was able to make this Turner's Cube very quickly in less than 10 minutes. Uh, and to do it with um, one or two sketches. With sketch one for the cube and sketch two was for all the cutouts. And then I was able to create patterns for the other sides of the cube. All right. Now if I want to give this to a CNC machine I could export it out as a generic file. Um, some CNC programs uh, actually take in inventor files and you can use that to create uh, your geometry or your G code for your CNC cutout. So hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. All right, so here's some self-promotion. Um, I just want people to know that I've been using Inventor for over 10 years, and I have been training people to use Inventor for over five years. So when it comes to best practices, all I want to do is help and teach people the, the, good, or the best way of doing things when it comes to software. Now, there's a lot of good tools out there. Uh, Inventor is a very good tool when it comes to design and engineering. Um, so for, for more tips and more things, uh, connect with me, connect with Advanced Solutions. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, technology and a lot of uh, people that know a lot about software in our company. Here's, here's our address. Uh, visit our website, and thanks for watching.